It was our good friend Benjamin Franklin that said there are two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. As the days progress, it's starting to feel more and more like Biden is gonna be our next president. In this video, I'm gonna break down what Joe Biden's tax plan means for you. Kind of debunk any of the misconceptions that are out there. They're concerned that their dividends aren't gonna be high. Corporate taxes are gonna go through the roof, which means stock earnings are gonna be low. Are there people actually spending 62% of their income on taxes? That seems kind of ridiculous. I spent a lot of hours last night reading this thing and doing a bunch of research, so you don't have to. Let's get into it. Build back better. The tax hikes that Biden wants to put in place would total about $4 trillion in federal revenue over the next 10 years. Biden's main priority right now is going to be dealing with COVID and passing stimulus. Currently, COVID testing is more of a state issue, but Biden wants to make it a federal issue. That way he can put a lot of funding towards it and make sure that everybody can get the proper testing that they need. He wants to set up testing stations all around the country. People could go to work or school and get tested regularly almost every day if they wanted to. So that would need a lot of money to get passed in order to provide supplies as well as testing equipment and to pay people to go work at those testing facilities at a daily basis. It's a big economic issue that he has to focus on right now before even thinking about other things. Now, assuming we get past the pandemic and Biden is finally in a position to start working on his economic policies, these are the taxes Biden wants to raise in order to fund other parts of his plan. So the first part of Biden's tax plan is income tax reform. And this is the one that he really stressed and made sure everybody knew it's not gonna affect you if you make less than $400,000 a year. Current law says right now that if you make more than $518,401, you have to pay 37% in federal income taxes. And that was lowered from the original 39.6% by Donald Trump. Biden wants to undo that. Instead of paying 37% if you make $516,000 or more, you have to pay 39.6% if you make $400,000 or more. Biden lowered the amount of money that you have to make in order to hit that top income bracket. And he also raised the percentage of that top income bracket from 37% to 39.6%. This is where we kind of start to see how someone might have to pay 62 Assuming you are a super high income earner and you qualify for that 39.6% bracket and you live in a high income tax state like California, along with some of these other additional things that everybody just kind of has to pay, that would get you to a 62% income tax mind boggling to me. Number two is capital gains, one that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. So as it stands right now with capital gains, if you make anywhere between zero to $40,000 in capital gains, you don't have to pay any taxes on that. But if you make from 40,000 to about 411,000, you have to pay 15%. And if you make more than 411,000 from capital gains, you have to pay 20% taxes on that. Now, Biden wants to keep that the same unless your total income for the year is a million. If you make more than a million dollars a year, you have to pay the typical federal tax rate on your capital gains. So this one isn't as bad as a lot of people are thinking it's going to be because you hear big numbers like 22%, 37%, like all these big, you know, high income bracket numbers, but that's really only if you're making a lot of money from capital gains. This is really affecting those that make a lot of money, at least a million dollars a year. The next one is corporate income taxes. I think that this is the one that we're probably all gonna feel a little bit indirectly, and that's because if a corporation has to pay more in taxes, their net income over the year is less because more money had to go towards taxes, meaning that the corporation isn't valued as high which brings stock prices lower. Back in 2017, Donald Trump lowered the corporate tax from 35% all the way down to 21%. The stock market was pretty bullish during this time, even when it was at 35%. I don't think we need to be as scared as we may think in raising it to 28%. If we can achieve this kind of high in the last 11 years, when the majority of that time was a 35% corporate income tax, 28% probably isn't gonna hurt us as bad as we might think. Biden also wants to instate a minimum tax 
tax on corporations. What does this mean? If your company, if your business is losing money, you're able to write that off against your tax bill. So if you lost money last year, you're able to pay less in taxes because you could say you lost money. What certain companies like Amazon will do is in order to make it look on paper like they're losing money and continue to spend money without making that much money is they'll just reinvest in their own company. That way it looks like on paper that they're losing money and they don't have to pay the outrageous taxes that a company like Amazon would probably have to pay. Biden wants to make sure that a loophole cannot happen by instating a minimum tax for all corporations. Even if you did keep investing in your company and make it look like you were getting losses, Every company, every corporation would have to pay this minimum tax. The next one is social security. Everybody has to pay social security. You and your employer split it. Whenever you get a paycheck and you see the little taxes at the top, you pay 6.2% and your employer matches that 6.2% for a total of 12.4%. But you only have to pay that up until you make $137,700. After that, you don't have to pay social security taxes anymore. What does that mean? Cause what, I just don't have to pay it anymore? Say I'm a programmer working up in San Francisco. I make $400,000 a year. Instead of paying that 12.4 or 6.2% on that $400,000, I only have to pay 6.2% on $137,700. Biden wants to get rid of that. If you do make $400,000 in a year from working your job, you have to pay 6.2% on all of that, not just $137,000 of that. The next tax hike is a real estate one and it's getting rid of the step up basis. Let me explain this one to you. The other day I was talking to my neighbor. He's kind of an older man. He bought his house here in Los Angeles in 1978 for $38,000. That's talk about a great investment. That house is probably worth around $700,000 right now. If Greg were to pass away and his children inherit his house, well, with step up basis, they would not have to pay any taxes on that property. They would just inherit it. So if it's worth $700,000, that just becomes part of his children's net worth. Biden wants to get rid of that. They would have to pay taxes on a $700,000 property versus nothing. This is something that a lot of rich people follow because you know it makes it so they never have to pay taxes on these assets that they have. Nope, no more of that. You have to pay taxes. If you inherit a property, you have to pay taxes on that and get rid of step up basis. So we talked about tax raises. Let's talk about tax cuts or tax credits, where the money that he wants to take from these people and give it to these people. Who are these people? What is this other entity that all this money is being taken from and given to? The first one is the first time homeowners credit. This is something that Obama put in place back in 2008 during the home recession, the great, the great recession. All the houses are foreclosed on. That's obviously not good for the economy. Government wants to incentivize people to go out and buy houses. So they give you a $15,000 tax credit to go out and buy a house. Biden wants to reinstate that. The next place this money is going is towards child and dependent care. This one will help low and middle class income families to help pay for child care. So Biden says that he wants to give up to $8,000 per child to these families, up to $16,000 per family. The next place is healthcare reform. We all know that this was a big part of Joe Biden's campaign, making it so public healthcare was available option for low income families. Biden wants to ensure that families aren't paying more than 8.5% of their income on health insurance or just health bills or expenses, things like that. So if you spend more than 8.5%, you'll get the difference paid back to you. So you only have to pay 8.5% on healthcare. The last thing Joe Biden wants to do is forgive student loan debt. As it currently stands, say I wanna to go to college and I ask you for $60,000 to help pay for my tuition. I'm slowly paying you back over the years and then one day I ask if we could renegotiate our terms. And you say, sure, I'll shave $20,000 off your debt. As it stands right now, I would have to pay taxes on that $20,000 that you shaved off as if it's income that I made. Not only would Biden make it so you won't have to pay that tax anymore on that percentage that you got shaved off, he's making it so after 20 years, your student loan debt is completely forgiven. You don't have to pay it at all after 20 years. That's crazy. Shit, if I would've known that, I would've gone to college and just been like, all right, I'm just gonna wait 20 years. Big if true. <laughs> Big if true. So here are the key takeaways from Joe Biden's tax plan. Number one, the top federal income tax rate would rise from 37% back up to 39.6% if you make more than $400,000 a year. Number two, the corporate tax rate would rise from 21% up to 28%. Number three, now if you make more than $137,000, you're gonna have to pay social security on that. Number four, if you were a low to middle class income earner, you can potentially get up to $16,000 a month to help pay for and support childcare. And number five, 
tax relief would be offered to student debt forgiveness and first time homeowners get a $15,000 credit on their first house. There it is guys, that's Joe Biden's tax plan broken down. Hopefully that was super digestible for you guys. I really tried to focus on like all the important stuff that would only kind of affect us as investors. And just keep in mind, it's looking like we're going to have a Republican Senate, meaning things like healthcare, education reform, climate change. It may be hard for Biden to get those passed. It'll probably be very much like the stimulus where Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump are constantly going back and forth trying to pass a package. If you guys like this video, please let us know. Drop a comment down below what you guys want to see next. I'm Nathan. I'm usually here with my brother Jonathan. He's not here right now. It's just me. I don't I, I don't actually know where he is. John Jonathan! What are you doing? Filming a video? I didn't realize you were here. Oh. Hey. Bro, I just filmed the whole video. Oh yeah, what's it about? Joe Biden's tax plan. Yeah, it's a fun. Important stuff. <laughs> now I'm sure you're gonna do some graphics, make it interesting. Cool. I hope it's good. Leave a comment or like the video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and getting us out there and getting exposure and finding new people so they can learn with you guys. And it's just a giant party over here at the Method Box channel. So come join along and let's get rich together, all right? All right, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.